Of course, Yoga and Sukha go on the journey too. It will be their first great pilgrimage, their first stay in the holy city of the Nihangs. I look after the horses and continue to learn how to handle the weapons. One day, would you like to be like the Babaji? Vote me like the Babaji? It's not only learning how to fight which makes you a Babaji. It's much more difficult than that. In spite of his youth, Yoga has already understood that to become a respected master, it is not enough to be a good swordsman. As is the case on every journey, Harry Singh is the only one who is motorized. He drives like a champion on this crowded road, which has the reputation of being one of the most dangerous in India. There isn't a job in the world I haven't done. I have driven many trucks. Today I'm driving this one, but tomorrow I could be driving gods if it were necessary. The Nihangs have left in small groups. On the carts, they have piled up all their riches, weapons, kitchen utensils, tents and books. Enough food to live on during the eight-day long festival of Hola Mohalla. Only the Nihangs who are responsible for the standards and drums make the journey on horseback. The festival of Hola Mohalla is not for Nihangs alone. Almost all the Sikhs in India gather together here. Some of them have taken several weeks to get to the city. Hananpur is one of the cities which is dearest to the hearts of Sikhs. This is where Govind Singh made his call to arms and this is where he is buried in the white temple dominating the city. The Nihangs have set up camp in a large field just outside the city. They are grouped together in communities, and there are thousands of them here. Whenever they travel, Yoga and Sukha share Hari Singh's tent. Today, tired out after their long journey, the children are excused training. Ah. Hari Singh takes particular care of his hair. His turban is nearly 25 meters long. 
It is an art to wind this helmet of cloth around his head. Children begin wearing a turban at the age of five, but theirs is only seven or eight meters long. Our Guru Gobind Singh gave us these swords. In one hand, we hold this sword, and in the other, this necklace. This signifies that we try to give justice with love and in peace. But if our pleas are not heard, then it's war, and we destroy all those who are unjust. Harry Singh illustrates his words with gestures. The interpreter backs away, and this makes everyone laugh. <laughs> Yoga's father, Udham, is in Anandpur too. No, it's not bang. We give them masala. Is it to drug them? No, no. It is a mixture of spices. There is cumin. It is very spicy. It helps them to be strong. <laughs> Normally, there are only about 5,000 inhabitants in Anandpur. During the festival of Hola Mahala, two million pilgrims invade the streets. Although they've hardly recovered from the journey, the children accompany Hari Singh to the temple. There is no special time or day to pay homage to the memory of Govind Singh. All day long, the pilgrims file past the monk reciting the Granth Sahib. The holy book is read all through the festival, non-stop, day and night. The choice of a sword is of prime importance to a Nihang. Religious festivals are also impressive markets for weapons. For these men with a martial temperament, it takes hours to choose a sword with the necessary curve and cutting edge. In principle, a sword lasts a lifetime. Even during festivals, the education of the children is not neglected. The afternoon is devoted to study in Hari Singh's tent. The fencing master is competent not only with a sword, but also with multiplication tables. Don't they go to school here? No, I give the lessons. Why? It's always like this when we are on the move. The teachers chase in the village. All of our young warriors have been taught in this way. The children mustn't get behind with their lessons. Do you learn English? No, because the master does not know it. What do you learn then? Punjabi. Is he strict with you? From time to time. The pilgrims continue to flock to Anandpur. Perched on top of whatever means of transport available, they've all come to take part in the most important Sikh gathering of the year. Religious festivals in India are a mixture of the sacred and the profane. The week-long festival is a meeting place for peddlers. Everything could be found in their makeshift stalls, from stainless steel saucepans to religious images.
Once they have said their prayers, the pilgrims can enjoy a trip on the big wheel or gape at the dancers who jiggle to the latest hit tunes. There is even a circus which has pitched its big top not far from the camp, but Yoga and Sukha are not allowed to go to the show. A young Nihang's only form of recreation is to learn how to handle weapons and horses. These children have no idea what toys are, and they feel no need for them. They are already so proud to belong to the elite of Sikh society. Twice a day, the Nihangs prepare a drink made of water and crushed almonds. It is given to the soldiers before the battle. Everyone jostles for a bowl of this beverage. We have been preparing this drink for centuries. Only the Nihangs know how to prepare it. Is this what you call bang? No. Bang is made with herbs. Bang allows the spirit to be led towards God. It helps us to concentrate and to meditate. With bang, it is easy to guide your spirit towards God. There is a lot of bang eaten and drunk here. It is a mixture of spices and herbs with hallucinogenic qualities, a sort of hemp. It is also used in the pancakes which are sold at every street corner during the big festivals. Consumption of bang is reserved for adults and doesn't seem to affect their ability to fight. Some of the Nihang's wives have also come to Anandpur. They have their own camp not far away from the men. We always wear a dagger too. It is compulsory as it is the symbol of our religion. Every year I come to Anandpur. My husband is here too. We came by tractor. There are more than 500 of us from the same village. To see Guru Govind Singh is the most important thing for us. We have come here to pay our respects and to serve him. It is our duty. But the men do not leave it to the women to prepare the large communal meals. Harry Singh is doing his stint in the kitchens. Are you preparing food for the Nihangs? No, it's for everybody. People of every religion or caste, everybody is welcome here. As long as there is food, we give it to them. I don't know how many there will be today. I go on making bread as long as there are people here, and when it's finished, I'll put away the pan. Sikh hospitality is no vain boast. Today, thanks to them, more than 1,000 people will have eaten a hot meal.
Guru Govind Singh was not only a warrior leader, he was also a kind, generous man. He taught the Nihangs to respect everyone, whatever his religion or his role in society. In this way, Sikhism is against the Hindu system of separation by caste. Respect for others is the guiding principle of these men. Life in the camp is well organized in spite of the apparent confusion. The Nihangs divide their time between reading, prayers and looking after their horses or themselves. In spite of the fact that Yoga's father is in Anandpur, it is always Harry Singh who looks after the child. A young person has no privileges within a community. He takes part in the life of the adults, but in a way he is everybody's child and Yoga feels perfectly safe here. In Anandpur, the Nihangs are rather like the kings of the festival. They always have an audience. Night and day, the pilgrims stream to the temple. The merry-go-rounds and the sideshows are always full. But rather than the giddy heights of the big wheel, some people prefer to watch the combat between Hari Singh and Young Yoga. <laughs> Since his arrival in Anandpur, Hari Singh has put on his yellow tunic, this is the color of sacrifice. It is worn in memory of Guru Govind Singh, who in this city called upon the Nihangs to give up their lives to save their religion. Young Nihangs are only allowed to take part in the great processions when they are 12 years old. This year, Yoga and Sukha are still only attentive onlookers. The final day of the festival of Hola Mohalla is beginning. All the Nihangs parade down the main street of Anandpur. Each community is grouped behind its standard. Today, there are many policemen among the crowd. Most of them are Sikhs themselves, which is not surprising. Sikhs number more than 10% in the Indian army and police force. This religion, with its warrior origins, has provided India with its greatest military leaders. Nevertheless, the government is rather wary when enormous gatherings like this take place. The great festival will last all day long on the banks of the river which flows through Anandpur. Exhibitions of skill and single combats are cheered and applauded by the public and the children. <laughs> This part of the festival is felt by everyone as a homage to the memory of Guru Govind Singh. All the Nihang Grand Masters are present. They will award a prize to the best horsemen. I've been coming here for 15 years. We have to show all the Sikhs in India that we are carrying on the tradition and that we are always in the service of our faith and that we are faithful to our Guru Govind Singh. What's happening here? These are games and combats. Was there a battle here? No. The Nihang army's first battle took place over there at the fort of Anandpur. That was 300 years ago. <laughs>
Hari Singh is not worried about the future. Yoga, Sukha and many others are ready to take over. The Sikh religion has its rightful place in multi-religious India. The separatist ambitions of certain extremists have calmed down, and for centuries the Nihangs, these horsemen of God, have continued to respect the same laws, arms in the service of God and men in the service of others. Yeah.